What's up YouTube? It's your boy Michael and in this video we're going to talk about how to properly fetch data on Next.js using Tanstack Query formerly known as React Query. So if you're fetching data on the client and you're using use effect you're introducing a lot of problems that honestly you don't really want to be dealing with. Tanstack um, is a way to properly manage those issues, deal with those issues, but there's also a lot of abstraction where it just makes you focus on core business logic um, and it's overall great, a great developer experience. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's open a terminal right here. We're going to do a little Cody code example. So let's create an app. I'll call it Tanstack uh, Data Demo. All right. Yes to TypeScript. Yes to ESLint. Yes to Tailwind. If you say yes to Source Directory, you're a child. <laughs> yes to App Router. We're going to say yes to all these things. All right. We're going to let this app build. All right, so we have our Next.js app ready. Let me just pop up our terminal. Let me yarn dev, localhost 3001, that's about right. And let's see if this all works. Perfect, all right, setup is all good. So now let's head over to the docs. Uh, we're gonna scroll down to installation. So I'm gonna need yarn add Tanstack React query. Great, let me drop this in here. And then another thing I always install is the dev tools. The dev tools are really, really helpful um, to debugging. Um, I'll show a quick example um, here. So this is installed. Now we're going to add the dev tools as well. When you look at the quick start guide, um, you see that there is a query client and a query client provider uh, where you pass the query client into the provider and the provider wraps a component. Um, this is a React example, though, and obviously this is a client component. But we're over at Next.js where our layout in particular, where we would have to wrap um, our children, is a server component. So how do we bypass this? So the best way to do this is I create a provider.tsx. I add the underscore. Is that is it? No. Is that an underscore? Yeah. Um, an underscore right in front of it so that um, Next.js knows that this is in a route. And then let's do a React functional component. So we'll call this provider, right? And then we'll just have nothing here. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to add these imports right here, but you won't need all of them. Right now, what you'll need is only query client and the client provider. So we're not going to call uh, use query right now. So we're going to need query client and query client provider, and then we're going to need to wrap our children with query client provider. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go over to the return. We're going to do query client, query client provider. Beautiful. We're going to wrap it in some children. I'll explain why we're doing this in a second. And then as the example shows us, we're going to have a client, and then we're going to pass um query client okay so let's create our client here and then i'm going to pass query client okay that's perfect and now for children children will be passed down and then this is just this children type is essentially going to be a react node and we have our provider set up so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our provider we're going to go to layout and then right below the body above the children, we're going to type provider and then wrap it like this. That way, um, layout.tsx is still is still rendered on the server and your provider um, is a client. So I'll have to do actually I didn't add the use client. Let's see what happens when we go to our page. Uh, reason why it's not working is because I forgot to do use client here. So let's do that. Let's go back to localhost and Eureka. It all works now. So remember that React Dev Tools I was talking about? I still didn't add it. So I installed it and then what do I have to do? So I have to import this, which fantastic. We'll import. All right. And then what do I do? And then I just add it right under. Um, right under my children. So 
right under my children. So let's do that. I'll do that here. And then let's check our app. If I move the camera right here, you see the React Dev Tools right here. And this is a pretty funky tool. This is a tool that you're, if you're going to be fetching data using uh, Tanstack, you're definitely going to need this tool. So we have our provider set up. We have a uh, Tanstack query set up. Now let's fetch some data. All right, so I'm just going to create some random component. Um, so we'll have that for now. And then we'll make this a client component because you're going to use Tanstack on the client. And then we'll call this, we'll just delete all this stuff here. And then we'll just call test component on our page. So if we go to localhost 3001, this is what we'll be seeing right now. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now, there's a way that they do it in the docs um, when they use Tanstack, uh, when they use um, Tanstack query. So what you'll do is you'll have a client uh, that you instantiate, query client, and then you'll use use query. You'll have a query key, which is what you use to identify uh, which query this is. So they've given this query to do's and then there's going to be a query function. And this is the function that fetches the data, right? So again, you call use query, you identify that query with a key, it's called to do's, and then you have a query function. And this function is what fetches the data. So I don't know if they have the get to do's here. They don't, but I'll show you guys an example. Now there is a way I like to particularly do it and how I do it. it I'm going to show you right now. It's pretty clean in my opinion. I'll create a utils folder, right? And then I'm gonna create a folder underneath it called hooks, right? And now I'm going to create use template.ts. I'll just create a template. I'll just copy paste the template I have and I'll explain line by line how it works. So this is how I use Tanstack query. First and foremost, you see this function right here, use template. This is what we would call in our test component. So if I wanted to use React Query right now, I would do const data equals use template, and that's it. And now if I console log data, if I console log data and we go to our page and I refresh a couple times, we go to inspect console. You see that data is undefined because we have not passed anything. But if I do, let's say, fetch 10, 20, 30, see how the data is returned. Now, this is how, how it works. But I'm going to show you how exactly I use it and like the mental model I use. So I basically um, turn them into hooks and give them descriptive names so I know exactly what the hook is doing. So this is how I do it. I'll do export const, whatever I want to call um, the hook. Let's say you're fetching price data. So you would call it use price data, whatever, like an, an easy name for you to um, identify what the function does. And then what I'll do is I'll return the use query and I'll pass in the query key. I just call it get template here, but it can be anything. It could be price data, whatever. And then I pass a query function called fetch template. And then I have fetch template above which essentially is the function that fetches the data, whatever data you're fetching. So if you had like an API that you were fetching from, you would do const response equals await fetch and then uh, HTTPS slash slash www.michaels.com slash API slash get money. Like whatever the API is, you would fetch that data and then you would pass that as a response. So that's, that's how it works. So, return, use query, the query key is the identifier, the query function is a function, um, you can have this right here. So, so some people actually have it like this where they'll just remove the, uh, the fetcher function and then all the information, all the, like I'm just abstracting it here so it can be more clear to debug and view. But some people write it like this. This kind of, I'm pretty sure you can make this async as well. It, this is kind of confusing to me. I like to separate things sometimes just for the sake of clarity. So. That's how I have it. And then when you go to the docs, uh, when we go to the docs, it's the same thing that's essentially being done, right? So you have your use query, right? Query keys being passed. 
which is the same thing that we do. And then the query function is get to do's. They don't show us the get to do's, but it's probably getting the to do's, right? So what I do is just I return this and then I call it in whatever component I need. And the beautiful part about a uh, task stack query is it gives you access to these functions. So for example, I get access to the data, but I also get access to uh, things like is fetching, is fetched, is loading. Um, I think there's is loaded as well. Oh no, never mind. That's me making it up. My favorite one is refetch. Um, so like, again, you can have some sort of maybe um, button um, and then refetch. And then what you can do is on click, um, refetch. So you could do something like this. Oops, no, I have to call this. I think I do this. Yep, there it is. So now if I go to our page and I go to localhost 3001, I have my refetch right there. If I hit fetch at console log and I open my docs, see now uh, my... Um, Dev tool, so you can see now uh, the get templates re uh, key is here. Watch what happens when I click refetch. See the data uh, being refetched. See the data being printed on the console log. And this is why Tanstack query is awesome. So you can even check it here. You can refetch here and validate the data. Like there's a lot of things that you could do trigger loading, and then it's doing a fresh refetch right now. So there's a lot of things that you can do with Tanstack. Uh, query. But even for simple data fetching, this is the mental model I use and this is the setup I use. I turn them into hooks, give them a descriptive name, I return the use query, pass in the query key and the query function, and then on the client component I just call um, the hook. Makes life very simple. Uh, let me know if this tutorial made sense. I just wanted to give you a high overview of how I use Tanstack Query to fetch data. If you have any questions, please feel free. Um, to drop them in the comments. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what other videos you'd like to watch. I hope this makes sense. Uh, thank you again for your time. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.